The backbone of our modern power grids lies in the efficient transmission of electricity from power plants to homes, industries, and cities. Two primary contenders vie for supremacy in this arena, the high-voltage AC HVAC system and the high-voltage DC HVDC system. Each has its strengths, weaknesses, and unique applications. In this video we delve into the intricacies of these systems, exploring their differences, advantages, and the electrifying battle between alternating current and direct current. To date, electric energy has been transmitted from the power plant to the consumer almost exclusively through high voltage lines carrying alternating current at a frequency of 50 or 60 Hz. High voltage direct current technology is now also to be used for expanding the power grid in the course of the energy transition. For technical and economic reasons, this technology is preferably utilized for connecting grid interface points far away from each other. At the present time, HVDC utilization are started to be a head HVAC system for isolated power sources or isolated consumer transmission network. In comparison to HVAC transmission, HVDC offers several main advantages as below which lead to their higher utilization, superior economics for long-distance application, HVDC lines are having lower lost in installation cost, with the demand of connection of remote power generation, the HVDC lines provide less CAPEX solution compared to HVAC lines. Lower reactive and skin effect, effect losses, the HVAC transmission are highly affected by the reactive power and the skin effect losses, the condition is causing current non-uniform distribution over the cross-section area of the conductor, this situation is not applicable for the HVDC transmission. Lower losses, the losses of HVDC transmission lines are approximately 3.5% per 1,000 km, while for HVAC transmission are 6.7% for the comparable lines, although HVDC converter are also experiencing some losses, the figure is marginal. In overall HVDC transmission losses are 30-40% to 40 lower compare the HVAC transmission in general, for onshore grid smaller right-of-way row requirements and lower costs. HVDC tower layout and footprint requirement are smaller compared to HVAC tower, a bipolar. HVDC configuration only require two cables compared to double circuit AC line which require six cables this led to smaller right-of-way row requirement. For remote area, this factor can significantly contribute to the cost of installation and in overall cost, as a result, the construction costs of HVDC lines are lower than HVAC. Ability to connect asynchronous AC systems, as HVDC technology are asynchronous, it completely differs compared to the HVAC grid integration, for HVAC the two AC systems need to be synchronized in term of frequency, voltage, and timing. The condition is not applicable for HVDC system which made HVDC system can adapt with any rated voltage or frequency in the existing grid that plan to be integrated, suitability for underwater applications, with the constraint of reactive power and losses as. Explained above, HVDC technology technology become the preferred choice for subsea underwater application with cable that had insulated sheet and metal outer sheet act like a capacitor. For that reason, HVDC cables become the main option for power transmission to oil and gas facilities offshore or interconnection. Higher capacity rating, with the ability of operating in the higher rated peak voltage compared to HVAC which only able to operate at approximately 71% of the rated voltage peak, HVDC is having higher transmission capability, in general, HVDC is have 40% higher transmission capability due to this constraint compared to HVAC lines. Ability to handle longer periods of overload operations, on the upset condition, HVDC lines able to operate within the overload condition longer compared to HVAC. Lines, HVDC able to withstand around 10 to 15% overload capacity for less than 30 minutes which provides sufficient time for the operator to apply mitigation measures for the upset condition, this capability is not available for the HVAC lines, ability to manage instabilities, HVDC asynchronous operation. Allowed the system to ensure system stability and mitigate the domino effect from one part grid to the other and avoid bigger impact to the grid, there can provide power flow control in term of direction and magnitude, in addition, it can be used for power injection to restore the balance to the grid in the situation of supply demand imbalance situation. High voltage direct current transmission has several technical advantages over the long established three phase alternating current technology. HVDC lines have lower losses than three phase alternating current lines. The conver converter station connects a HVDC line to a three phase alternating current network. Electric and magnetic fields. Static electric and magnetic fields occur in the vicinity of HVDC lines. The direct current sides of the converters also produce static electric and magnetic fields, 
mainly time varying alternating fields with the mains frequency of 50 Hz arise around three phase alternating current connecting lines. Furthermore, electric and magnetic fields at other frequencies can be generated in the converters. Technical equipment filters on the three phase AC and direct current sides ensure that these components are prevented from coming into contact with the connected lines as well as possible. Field strength levels, the field strengths surrounding the individual technical equipment depend on several constructional and operational parameters and on the distances to the installation. They cannot be generally specified but have to be determined for each particular case. It is currently assumed that the static magnetic fields of HVDC lines in the immediate vicinity of the transmission line route reach the ma magnitude of the Earth's natural magnetic field. In Germany, the latter has a flux density of about 45 microteslas. At present, little information is available about the electric field strengths of HVDC overhead lines, however, there is no limit value restriction for them as no direct health effects have been identified for static electric fields. The electric fields generated by underground cables are shielded by cable insulation, only the magnetic field is present at the Earth's surface. The highest static or low-frequency magnetic fields in converter stations are expected around the incoming and outgoing lines. In the vicinity of three-phase alternating current lines, magnetic alternating fields arise in the same order of magnitude as with other high-voltage lines. The walls of the converter halls shield against the electric fields generated by the particular plant components. Potential health effects, biological effects, and thus direct health effects of static fields are only known to occur at very high magnetic field strengths. For this reason, no adverse health effects are expected from the low magnetic field strengths in the vicinity, vicinity of HVDC lines or converters. Weaker magnetic fields might pose an indirect risk as they may exert forces on magnetizable objects and implants. The health effects of the low-frequency fields occurring in the vicinity of the converter do not differ from the effects of the fields around alternating current lines. Corona discharges, very high electric field strengths exist adjacent to the surface of the live parts of high-voltage overhead power lines alternating current or direct current. Electric discharge processes Corona discharges can generate electrically charged air ions in space charges. The active region close to the line where the air ions are generated is commonly referred to as corona. In the corona, small amounts of ozone and nitrogen oxides can be formed and pollutants in the air may change their electric state of charge. These substances can be dispersed by the wind. Whether this may have any adverse health effects on humans is the subject of discussion and research. Effects on animals and plants, many perhaps even all bird species are able to detect the static Earth's magnetic field and to use it to orient themselves. It is possible that the static magnetic fields of HVDC lines can be perceived by birds and that their behavior is influenced by the fields in close proximity to the lines. The same also applies to species of mammals which are able to perceive the Earth's magnetic field. Harm to animals and plants caused by the electric and magnetic fields of high voltage lines is not known and is also not expected from HVDC lines. However, direct effects of electricity such as electric shocks are possible. In the perspective of oil and gas development, HVDC start becoming one of the options for the oil and gas company for reducing their carbon footprint. In the electrifying clash between high-voltage AC and high-voltage DC transmission systems, both contenders bring their unique strengths to the power grid arena. While HVAC dances with alternating currents, HVDC strides steadfastly in a single direction. Remember that these systems aren't rivals, they're complementary partners, each playing a vital role in our electrified world. Whether it's the hum of transformers or the whisper of converters, our energy future thrives on this dynamic duet. So, next time you flick a switch, appreciate the symphony of electrons alternating and direct orchestrating our modern lives.